Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel for another third party figure review. Now today we're going to be taking a look at the Toys Era The Mechanical. Now basically this is their third party representation of Cable from Deadpool 2. Now way back when we got the film we were all thinking who is going to make this Cable figure because we sort of had a feeling that Hot Toys wasn't going to and of course Toys Era stepped up to the plate. Now this is the first figure that I've ever had from Toys Era. I didn't know what to expect from in terms of quality or in terms of fit and finish. I didn't expect really anything. I was just going in blind and I have to say I am pleasantly surprised with this release. Now this is just a standard version. The deluxe version does come with the time travel device as well as a cleaner sort of teddy bear and also the light up eye section. I have the time travel device from the Dusty Deadpool which I thought was going to be far superior anyway so I didn't worry about getting the deluxe version. Now I want to say a huge thank you to the man who can over in Hong Kong, Eric Lee, for picking me up this figure. He was literally looking around in a whole bunch of random stores for me in order to pick up this figure and he managed to eventually find it and I want to say a huge thank you. His link is down in the description below as well as the link to his Facebook group and also my Facebook group, the Justin's Collector Group, which is a really awesome place to come together and chat figures. It's been going really well and I want to say a huge thank you to everyone who's joined so far and everyone who is going to join. Now without further ado, what we're going to do is get all of Cable's accessories out here and take a look at everything he comes with. All right, now taking a look at everything that comes with Cable, you can see that he comes with a hell of a lot of stuff. I wasn't expecting to see all these bits and pieces when I did open the box. I was really, really surprised at how much awesome stuff he comes with. Let's get the worst of the bunch out of the way first. And you can see that it's this display base that says the mechanical on it that's not even centered. I mean, that's really, really poor to be honest with you. And this display base is a really sort of hollow plastic sort of piece. I really wish they put a little bit more effort into their display bases. I'm a big fan of SoSo -So Toys in terms of how they do their display bases I wish these guys had done the same thing and that's the base that it comes with let's take a look at the little teddy bear his daughter's teddy bear uh, I think her name's Hope and you can see that it's a really really nicely painted piece it is a little bit gummy and there was a really strong paint smell straight out of the box but I don't think it's wet or anything I think it's going to be just fine hanging on cable when you do have it all displayed up now let's take a look at the weapons before we look at these tiny little pieces because I know they're going to be a little bit of a pain but especially cables big gun here this is just really really nicely detailed I mean this is a gorgeous piece you can see that there's a really nice level of paint work on this as well I've seen a few other toys era figures not in person but sort of reviews and stuff online and I wasn't a big fan but this definitely is sort of their flagship figure. I think Keyboard Warriors did say that in their video. This is their flagship and you can definitely tell. I mean, even the sort of little guitar dial, which they did point out, I'm a real big fan of how this looks. And then obviously all of the other accessories. And I will put all these pieces on the actual big gun itself. So you can see what that looks like all assembled up. But basically, I mean, you know what these sort of handguns and stuff look like with these figures by now. I mean, the slides can move, the magazines can remove out of them. I mean, all of that stuff is pretty standard and he does come with a bunch of accessories. Now this grenade launcher piece is really, really awesome. And they've actually used real twine or real lace on the end here, which is a really awesome little touch. I'm a big fan of the way that looks. Obviously he used that in the prison scene. All right, let's take a look at these little magazines. They don't remove, unfortunately, from these pieces. They are stuck in as far as I can tell. Yep, and there it goes flying. You can see that there are little clips on the back that will clip onto the vest on the front of cable. So he comes with one sort of tan one and two black ones. And then these little uh, magazines here for his pistols. They also do not come out and they do have clips on the back. Now he also comes with two different holsters. These are really fiddly. This is why I saved them for last, but you can see that they are little rubbery pieces and there are clips. Yep, you guessed it on the back as well as they go flying. Now the final little pieces that he does uh, that he does come with are these little bullet shell pieces or grenades, uh, probably for his grenade launcher. And they are die cast as far as I can tell, which is really, really impressive and I'm a big fan of when they include stuff like that. Uh, let's take a look at his hands now. You can see that he does come with two different versions of his hands. The paintwork is a little bit sloppy on these ones here. You can see that's a little bit gummy doesn't look as good as Hot Toys, but there is that little speckling texture, which I do appreciate. And they are really nice and soft, so it shouldn't be an issue getting them on the hand pegs. You can see that the silver on the mechanical hand, huh, pardon the pun, is painted quite nicely as well. Now, a piece that he doesn't come with, but I will have him displayed with, is the time travel device that comes with the Dusty Deadpool version. I don't have the deluxe version to show you a comparison, but this is what this one looks like, and it's a really nicely detailed piece. It doesn't have that awful strap mechanism on the back that you used to put it on the hand. I guess it will just sit just like so over the wrist peg, and I'm a big fan. I know I've said that a whole bunch, but that's what it's going to look like, and you can use it 
with uh, the fists, I do believe. I think that was one of Keyboard Warrior's biggest complaints is that you couldn't use the one that it came with with the fists, but these ones you definitely can. So awesome to have this if you do have the Dusty Deadpool. Otherwise, go for the deluxe version of Cable. Now you can see there's a mess of stuff everywhere. So what we're going to do is get this all on the figure himself and get him out here and take a look at that controversial head sculpt. Getting a really nice up close look at that head sculpt. I mean, that is Josh Brolin or Cable from Deadpool 2. They have nailed that head sculpt. I think it looks really, really on point. And I don't think I'm losing anything by not having the light up eye. I think the likeness is just as strong as if it was having that sort of light up effect. I definitely do think it looks exactly as it should. Toys Era have done an amazing job with the likeness. Now, taking a look at the rest of the outfit, you can see that it is really nicely done as well. This was based off the initial promo images that we got of Cable from Deadpool 2, not the on-screen suit because that had the armor plating on the chest, whereas this is just a rig sort of section with all the sort of uh, magazines and everything. And I have popped it in the exact same place as the screen or the promo image uh, shots did show. And you can see that you can have the time travel device on the fist if you use the one from the dusty version of Deadpool. And taking a look around back, you can see all the rigging for the actual vest itself. Now, he does have that sort of nanotech virus stuff going on there. And do check out Jenkin Wong video uh, if you want to see the underside of this shirt because he did do a really good job of showcasing all of the sort of virus on the underside of the shirt. And you get to see all the level of detail and sculpting that they did put into this figure. Really, really great job on that. I mean, even the arm as well. Look how good that looks. It's really, really nicely done with a really nice wash in there as well. They have definitely nailed that. And I do love how all of the accessories cohesively sort of fit on here and everything has a place, which I definitely do appreciate. I hate when there's a whole bunch of stuff just littering around in a plastic box. I prefer that to go on the figure itself. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to angle the camera down and give you a look at the legs. Now, taking a look at Cable's really sort of boofy, poofy pants, you can see that they do sort of poof out a bit and they are really nice and loose fitting, but that does allow for an excellent range of motion. Now, something that not a lot of people have touched on is the fact that his belt buckle here is actually die cast. And you can see that that's a metal piece, just feeling it, it is cold to the touch. That is a die cast piece. So there's quite a few little die cast pieces going on throughout this figure. So I definitely do think this is Toys Era's flagship figure. So them sort of promoting their work because this is an amazing release. Now, the boots I thought were gonna be a little bit more frustrating than they are, but you can see there's quite a lot of side to side motion. So I can't really complain about it not being a split ankle design because they are soft enough to allow for a good range of motion and they do stay in place, which is really awesome. And you can see that I have him holding the gun. The hands are really nice and soft, so they do allow you to pop the gun in the hand quite nicely. And it does sit in there pretty well. I just wish it was a double jointed elbow so you can have him sort of holding it with two hands. But you can see all the pieces do slot on there really nicely. You got the magazine, grenade launcher, scope, they all do slot on there, no trouble at all. It's a really, really nice looking piece once you have everything all assembled. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get Deadpool out here and give you a quick height comparison between between these two figures. Now, giving you a look at the height difference between Cable and the Deadpool 2 figure, you can definitely see that there is a really good height difference because obviously Josh Brolin is a little bit shorter and he was shorter in the film as well. So obviously they've done a really, really good job of choosing a body that's not too tall so it doesn't look out of proportion with Deadpool. I think these two are gonna look really, really nice on the shelf together. And don't worry, I will be doing a comparison video between this Cable figure, the dusty version of Deadpool and this red basic version of Deadpool as well. So definitely stay tuned to the channel for that. Now I thought I'd quickly show you how to pop the top section on cable and you can see it sits on there quite nicely. It doesn't require a lot of futzing and it looks pretty good. I think this is where a lot of people are having the issue with the head sculpt is it thins out the neck just a little bit and I don't think that looks very good. You have to sort of pull it down and then you're getting a really nice look for cable and you can actually put the hood on the figure although I don't recommend it because it's really poofy and it sits up quite a lot. I mean it looks pretty good down there but I don't think you really wore it that much in the film anyway from what I can remember but if you do want to have this on the figure it definitely does look really good. You just have to do a little bit of futzing to make it look perfect. Getting started with the three cool things on Cable. The first is the fact that you can magnetize his gun to his back and he can hold it just like he did in the film. The second cool thing about this Cable figure is the fact that the hands are really nice and soft and they do allow for a really nice range of motion and when you pull them off it leaves a wrist peg in the figure. You don't get that from a lot of even Hot Toys figures. The third and final really awesome thing about this figure is the fact that the boots are nice and squishy and I've already mentioned this but they do allow for a really nice range of motion. They stay in place so you get that ankle pivot even though it's one solid boot. The first annoying thing on this Cable figure is the fact that the magnet is so incredibly visible on the back there. 
where I kind of wish they'd integrated it under the rubber skin of the body. The second annoying thing is the fact that you have to attach all of these little pouches and accessory pieces and they do fall off all the time. I wish they'd come included already on the figure. And you guessed it, the third and final thing that I don't like about this figure is this hollow, awful display base with the printed nameplate that's not even in the middle of the display base. This is just poor effort on the part of Toys Era. Just wrapping up on this Toys Era cable, he's another really, really cool third party figure. And if you are in need of a cable, which I know a lot of people are, definitely go ahead and pick him up. He's a really, really awesome piece. The level of detail in terms of the intricacies on the arm and the body itself, as well as all the accessories that clip onto him, it just makes this figure one to have because you don't see this too often, especially not from third party figures. I mean, this is definitely a standout for me. I picked up a bunch of So So toy stuff and I absolutely adore them. But this figure is just amazing, and I might keep my eye on Toy Zero for future releases, especially with that Colossus and Juggernaut. Now, if you are looking for this figure or any other figures at all in Hong Kong, hit up Eric Lee. He is the man who can. His link is down in the description below. Join his group, and he'll post up all of the sales info on there and definitely do check out Justin's collector group as well the brand new collector group that I've started with a bunch of friends YouTubers and collectors alike and we're all sharing our collections chatting about figures and stuff it's a really awesome place to come together and collaborate that's about it for this video guys like comment and subscribe and I'll catch you in the next video